it's a very, very small exaggeration, if an exaggeration at all, to say that the puppets have saved my life. I made a puppet and when she looked back at me, it was the most incredible thing. So I'm able to play out things and explore things for myself, but also connect with people in a way that's beyond the intellect. I like finding things and then I have an idea what it might turn into. It's given me something always to return to. I get quite a sense of sort of reward and satisfaction out of out of making something. I think it would be a far more difficult life if if I didn't have that. Making art for me is about making sense of things. It's trying to make sense of experiences in a way that's not necessarily literal or textual, it's more maybe poetic and irrational and sort of more image based. Picking up a stone and taking it for a walk can be artwork. A print is artwork or a drawing can be artwork. But actually the joy of mark making it can be really, really expressive and communicative. You can pick up a piece of chalk and drag it along the pavement and to me that's a drawing, that's a mark. You know, and it's a really exciting mark because it's got a sound attached to it and a physical action. If you took away all the things that you had, I had on the floor around me, if you took all, all of those things away, I would be absolutely bereft. I can get up and go, oh, my brain hurts today, I can't function in sentences and words, and I can't communicate well today. Thank goodness I've got this piece of paper I can cut up <laughs> and stick next to that other piece of paper, and it explains how I feel today without having to say anything else. Photography is that sort of medium that everybody engages with one way or another, whether it's they talk about photographs, look at them or take them. And I think because of that, it's a very good starting point. Then what comes out of that is the ability for photography or any artistic medium really to give voice. The arts help challenge stigma because there's a sense of communication and awareness around them. People tell their story. Other people with a similar thing can relate to it. But also people who don't relate to it can kind of perhaps empathise and understand these things more. Most of the stuff I do is musical and I relate to most things through my ears. Are we, on the, are we in the same key? Are we in tune with each other? My hobby, when I'm not making music for a living or teaching other people to make music, I'm singing in a choir. And what I love about it is I'm part of a group of people that make this sound. It's always really quite amazing. It's, it's really quite uplifting. You always feel less tired at the end of it than you do at the beginning. Ha, ha, ha. We are searchers of the truth. Everyone's a child deep down. Gotta say it like you mean it. Ooh. It's magic. It really, really is. I see them walk in at seven and they're, you know, they're really weary and they've got the weight of the world on their shoulders. They walk out at nine o'clock and they're all just like bright eyed and really energized. You feel taller, your muscles feel stronger. You know, for me, I feel I can almost hear my brain whirring. You know, I can hear it working and I can and I feel more vital.
Well, we have an you know, emotional body as well as a physical and a mental body. And then uh, somehow it kind of all takes care of each other. It somehow uh, property to a healing property. It's sad to see, you know, certain students, their condition is deteriorating and then they sometimes come in a class, you know, in the morning, really looking worried and then also in pain. And then, uh, you know, but when we turn the music on, her almost like a heart lifted and then started dancing and then, you know, she's no longer in the pain. I think it's often a bit of a vehicle through illness as well you know, especially mental illness. I think sometimes there's things that you can't really talk about or really explain what's going on, but you can, um, you know, you might work that out through through pictures or, or making something or collecting things. And I've heard people say that, like running projects, especially photography projects, where people have literally said that by picking up a camera, it's enabled them to see their world in a different way, which when, if you are going through tough times, then that sort of tool as a way of seeing things differently, bringing a new perspective is really key. In the school hall, um, darkened it down and, and, and then lit it very lightly and had very gentle music playing. And the children came in crawling, and then there were just different things for them to experience. And one of the areas was um, a big lamp and a big sh and a sheet up and some scissors and black paper. Suddenly on the screen, the most amazing performance started to happen. Um, and it's slaying of the Dragon George and the Dragon story playing out. And then when we went behind, it was a child that normally doesn't concentrate at all. And he just quietly, you know, secretly, he thought, behind the screen, got on and made this, this amazing thing. Well, I, I think the fantastic thing that the arts have to offer is that when, when they're being an artist, you can really say to them, anything you do is OK, anything is fine. And the more it's coming from you, it, that's, it, that's great. And I think it's something to do with making connections with things. And I think the arts enables a very sub values a very subjective interpretation. So I always think if, if um, the young people that I work with can stand up and talk about a piece of work with confidence, they could probably stand up and talk about anything. Uh, what happened is that when I was in Somalia, I was born in Somalia, in rural area really, but I used to live in capital city in Mogadishu. And 1991, war broke out. This guy came up to me and said, I've got 30 years of suffering that you can make a film out of. And it turned out he'd been a boy soldier in Somalia. And he very much wanted his voice heard. He wanted his story told and put into a film. And he's used that film now to explain where he's come from. He doesn't have to talk about it. He can just say, watch the film. We know that through play and through stories or through art, um, that's a way that they can just start doing something and it just comes out. And after a while, they seem to be able to make more sense of it and they feel better. It, it, it helps people make sense of their experience. It doesn't stop them being ill. You know, and I th it just helps them cope with it better. Actually, you can look upon this part of your life differently or you can express it in a different way by using this process of collage or having some random words that you cut up and put in a different order or there's a picture you can cut out or a photograph that you can put together with something else. You're giving yourself permission to take some time out or actually take some time in, <laughs> you know, to yourself. We're you can just let things flow, you know, and try not to judge yourself and just let yourself go with it and see where it goes. And I think that once we give ourselves permission to do that, 
um, we're much kinder to ourselves. I want to say something about just being an audience to arts as well as being a maker of arts because I think there's a lot to be said for um, listening to music, going to the theatre, sitting in front of a Turner painting, um, looking through photographs online. You can just get consumed by it and the imagination is fired and emotionally you become charged and I think you know that's what it is is it kind of in inspires a sense of hope inspires a sense of potential <laughs>